Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm content you are here today. I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I have been ready to be done with this show. I'm not lying when I say I have lost brain cells re-watching it. I feel like you guys should be thanking me, quite honestly. I'm out here suffering just for your soul entertainment. I deserve some sort of award or medal for this. I'm not gonna waste any more time doing a whole long intro. I know why you're here. Y'all know why you're here. So let's just get right into it. This is part three to the Secret Life of the American Teenager recap, deep dive, retelling, what have you series. Like I said, this is part three so if you haven't watched part one and two i'm quite perplexed as to how you ended up here so go watch those other two videos so you can get caught up with the rest of us okay let's do a very quick recap of where the characters were at the end of season three ashley took the ged and aced it so she and her boyfriend took a road trip across the u.s adrian and ben suffered a stillborn delivery and are beyond devastated after that and finally, Ricky and Amy tell each other they love each other and want to be together forever. Okay, let's not waste any more time. Let's get into season four. Amy and John have been sleeping over at Ricky's quite frequently. Like at this point, her sleepover bag is packed every single night. So Ricky is just like, I mean, y'all are here all the time. Why not just move in? And Amy is like, no, Ricky, we can't. But then a couple seconds later, she says, okay. However, she does feel a little weird about it considering Adrian and Ben are going through some serious shit while her and Ricky are living it up. Meanwhile, Adrian is pretty depressed after what happened to her baby and doesn't want to go to school or do anything, to be honest. Ben is trying to move on as best as he can, but he's still struggling with what happened to them. So it's honestly just a really sad time for the both of them. Tom randomly has a new girlfriend that Kathleen finds kind of sus because she has kids kids and no money and frankly she just thinks that she's trying to take advantage of Tom. But she later meets her and thinks she's okay so she lets her and her kids move into the guest house with Tom. Also Kathleen's husband went back to Zimbabwe since she didn't want to go with him after he asked for the both of them to go back. Amy is a little worried because she's afraid that someone is going to tell Adrian about her and Ricky living together so she would rather just tell Adrian that herself. And Ricky is like whoa there let's talk about this he thinks amy should just leave it alone and only mention it if adrian specifically asks and she's just like oh. Fine. Ben finds Amy at school and asks her to go talk to Adrian just so she can have some kind of interaction with someone and she agrees to it. When Amy comes by to see her, Adrian is not having it. Adrian, hi. Thanks for letting me come by. I didn't let you, you just came over here. <laughs> They talk for a bit and Adrian's just like, listen, if you and me are gonna be cool, then don't tiptoe around me. Let's just talk like normal people. What's going on with you? And Amy's like, okay, I'm moving in with Ricky. So, we decided we'd just move in together. Now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were gonna wait until summer, but we decided not to. Why is that, why now? We just want to. <laughs> The episode ends with Ben going over to his dad's house for dinner and tells him that he doesn't want to be married anymore. In episode two, Leo's assistant that I guess has been his assistant for like 25 plus years, she like randomly quits out of nowhere and he tells Betty about it and Betty's just like, oh, I can replace her. That ain't no problem. But Leo was kind of tired of her ass. So he says, no, don't worry about it. Ashley is on the road with her boyfriend, Toby, because they got their GED. So what else can they do? I also want to point out that they're using a physical map to get across the United States. Now that I think about it, I don't think I've ever read a map before. Do I sound really Gen Z when I say that? George finds out that Amy is living with Ricky from Ruben, Adrian's dad, and he's pissed because he didn't find that out from Amy. Amy is confused because she doesn't understand what the big deal is anyways. What's the problem? But George says that if things don't work out, she's always welcome to come home. In a, you know, petty George kind of way. But he still means it. Ricky finds out from Ben that Amy told Adrian that Amy and Ricky are living together, so now Ben is pissed the fuck off. 
Ricky tells Ben to stand up and get over it. You're just mad because you went out of your relationship. Amy is now freaking out because she told Ricky that the only reason Adrian knows about them living together is because her dad told Adrian. But Ricky knows that Amy's the one that told Adrian. So when he goes up to her saying, hey, I wanna talk to your dad so he can like clear the air with him, Amy lies her ass off again. I asked you to just leave it alone and I want you to just leave it alone, okay? He's my dad and I think I know better than you what to do here. All right. I gave you a chance to tell me and you didn't take it. I know you're lying. Amy's annoying, but I respect someone that sticks to their story till the end. But he forgives her, so we move. Ben starts talking shit about Ricky and Amy's relationship to Henry and Alice and says he wants out of his marriage. They're like, Oh, that's not. Betty goes to see Adrian and tells her to pick herself back up because she looks terrible. In episode three, both of Ricky's moms find out that Ricky and Amy are living together and they're annoyed that he didn't tell them, but they get over it. Leo goes to the school to pull Ben out of class and he's just like, hey, wanna leave for the day? Let's hang out. And Ben is like, um, nah, I've missed enough school already. What is wrong with you? And Leo's like, come on, I know you're doing fine in school. Like, let's, let's go, come on, let's go. Turns out the only reason Leo came to bother him is because Ben told Leo that Camille, his assistant that quit, quit because she's actually in love with him. So now Leo's all confused, even though he's still married to Betty. Ben is over here like, are you kidding me right now? Don't you have a job? Why are you bothering me? Grace is back from her volunteer work in Zimbabwe and she came to see Adrian for the two of them to just catch up. And while they're talking, Grace tells Adrian what she's really been up to in Zimbabwe. All the guys look like that over there. I might volunteer. He's not from over there. He's from over here. He's from California. He was over there with his dad. His dad was one of the doctors. Wait, even this guy? Yep. Yeah, she kind of cheated on Grant, but I never really liked him all that much anyways, so I'm not that mad at it. Leo goes to Camille's to try to get her to come back and she says no. And he also kind of insinuates that he made a mistake marrying Betty. Ricky comes by Amy's house to talk to George about them living together because he wants there to be no beef, which is actually very mature of him. He asks George if he would consider coming by to just visit them. And George says no, because he's not cool with them living together. They're way too young to be making a decision like this. And, I guess that's understandable. Grace does not want to see Grant till like the next day and Kathleen finds that kind of sus. And Grace is like, well, I just don't feel like seeing him. And Kathleen is like, oh, it's because of that guy you met, huh? And Grace is like, there's no guy. What are you talking about? And Kathleen is like, oh, okay. This you? She gagged her, I fear. Also, the guy that Grace was with shows up at her house looking for her. While Jack and her new boo, Daniel, are waiting for her to wake up, Grant shows up at the house too. Grace and Grant talk and they end up breaking up but it kind of goes okay. Ben comes back to the apartment to tell Adrian that he's leaving her, but she got all cute again, talks him out of it, and they end up sleeping together. And finally, George ends up coming to Ricky and Amy's apartment to show them support. In the next episode, Amy thinks that John has an ear infection and she tells Ricky that they should take him to the hospital. And he doesn't think John is all that sick and she's just being dramatic. They end up going back and forth about it and John covers his ear saying, ow, so they take him to the ER. Ben and Adrian pretty much went at it like, all weekend, but he still wants out of that marriage. Adrian notices he's acting kind of sus, so she comes up with a plan by saying she's going to cosmetology school in New York just to see what his reaction would be. While at the hospital, Ricky talks to a nurse to get them checked in, and he keeps calling Amy his wife without noticing. He's honestly really annoyed because he doesn't think there's anything wrong with John. 
Amy calls her mom about it, and Anne also thinks there's nothing wrong with John, but Amy's not about to admit that they went up there for nothing. There better be something wrong with her son. Ashley and Toby are done with their educational road trip early, so George tells her to get a job. She's like, how am I supposed to get a job? I have no credentials. And he's like, show them your GED that he calls a phony diploma. He's still not funny. Tom goes to Kathleen saying he's annoyed with his girlfriend, Rachel, because he wanted to watch some TV. And she said no, because her kids need to get some sleep for school. Kathleen is like, well, you chose to have her move in. So you need to get over it. Betty talks to Leo and questions him about whether he's happy with her, but he says he's fine. Adrian ends up telling Ben about her plans for school. And he says this. I'm totally for it. Yeah, if that's what you want to do, go into cosmetology. Are you? Again, if that's what you want to do. If that's what you want to do, I totally support you. And, um, well, what if I would need to go to New York to study? New York? Are you kidding me? That'd be great. So now she's pissed the fuck off. Amy and Ricky finally get in to see the doctor and the doctor says that there's nothing wrong with John. John keeps covering his ear saying ow because he's tired of their antics and guess what? So are we. So Ricky and Amy promise not to argue around John anymore as much. The episode ends with Adrian asking her doctor if she could get pregnant again soon. In the next episode, Ricky wakes up and decides to start terrorizing Amy because John fell asleep in the room with her when the agreement was that him and John would sleep in the living room. Amy tells him that she thinks Adrian wanting to go to New York is a farce and she just wants to get out of her marriage. And Ricky tells her that Adrian called him, but he didn't answer, so now, Amy's mad. We then get a scene to Adrian taking a little power walk with Adele's rolling in the deep playing in the background. Starting in my heart, reaching a fever pitch and it's bringing me out the dark. <laughs> I can't take this show seriously. Adrian asks Amy and Grace to help her clean out the nursery that was meant for her daughter because she thinks it's time for her and Ben to move on and they agree to do it. Also, Nora starts working for Leo as his new assistant, so good for her. While Grace is helping out Adrian with the nursery, she asks her why she's ready to do this now. And Adrian tells her that her new plan is to get pregnant again and have another baby with Ben. And Grace is gagged. What do you mean you're gonna have another baby? Ben comes back and finds the room completely clear and he goes off. I never even wanted to marry you. I never even wanted to have sex with you in the first place. Every single bit of pain that both of us have had has been because of you. Adrian then punches the wall. Ben goes to the church nursery to find his bear that his mother left for him before she died since Adrian accidentally packed it up with the rest of the things from the nursery and he ends up running into Amy saying, where did everything go wrong with them? Like, Ricky's never going to treat you right. He's not, he's not good enough for you, Amy. And sooner or later, he's going to hurt you. That's who he is. That's who he was. Grace and Daniel are officially dating now and she decides to be a little petty and kiss him in front of Jack. Ben shows up to dinner with his dad really fucked up and he ends up fainting in the middle of the restaurant. At least he got his bear back. Remember when Ricky said Adrian called him? Yeah, he ended up saving a voicemail that she left for him. Long time no see. I've been thinking about you. And I know you've been thinking about me, haven't you? Good night, Ricky. Message saved. In episode six, Ben wakes up super hung over, so he stomps his feet on over to the apartment to find Adrian and oops, she's nowhere to be found. He also sees the massive holes she punched into the nursery wall. So he decides to pack up all his shit and go. Jack and Madison break up again, and I'm trying to decide whether or not to stop mentioning them because no one cares. Adrian surprises everyone by returning to school and she's just like, hey guys, 
miss me? But now Ben is ready to scrap. He's trying to leave her. But Adrian is not gonna let dumb boy Ben make her look crazy. So she tells Amy and everyone else that her and Ben are good. Ben then calls his dad and is like, dad, Adrian came back to school and I moved out. So you have to let me move back home or I'm gonna get drunk again. And Leo was like, you're not coming back home. So you can forget about that. And Ben is like, okay, then I'll just get my own place. With what coin? And Leo is like, I think the fuck not. You better take your annoying little ass back over there and be with your wife. Adrian talks to the school counselor saying her and Ben are good. He's really been helping her during this difficult time. She's on a press run tour here. And the counselor is like, you do know your man was passed out in a restaurant drunk last night, right? And Adrian is like, girl. I, I can't believe it. I can't believe people would say that my Ben was drunk. He doesn't drink. Look, he ate ceviche, had a bad reaction to it, and bam, on the floor. You see how quick she is on her feet. There's a reason why she's the smartest one out of all of them. The counselor also tells her that if she gets good grades and does summer school, she'll be able to graduate just in time for the fall before she goes to college. Ricky has an interview with a college that he's super interested in, so good for him. Adrian catches Amy talking shit, and instead of beating her ass, she keeps it cute, and she says this. Oh, uh, I ran into Ricky while I was in the counselor's office. He has an interview today. Yeah. And I found out from Miss O'Malley that it's at a college where I've been accepted. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. Ricky goes to the interview and the person doing it turns out to be that girl Carly that tried to sleep with him last year and she tries to get at him again. He obviously turns her down, but she's not having that. She then calls the school counselor saying that Ricky won't be accepted into their college and that Ricky tried to fuck her. All of this commotion over Ricky is quite concerning. He's not that fun or interesting, but hey, the girlies love him. But Carly's creepy ass because she's very much older than him needs to be in jail immediately. Jack's dad tells Kathleen that he's moving back to town so he can be in the church again. But more importantly, he spills the beans on Grace's boyfriend Daniel being in college. Daniel comes by Grace's house to talk to her mom and she's obviously pissed that Daniel is in college. But after talking with him for a little bit, she thinks he's cool. While they're talking, Grace tries to sneak out of the house to go meet with Daniel in his car. And Daniel tells Kathleen what she's doing. So they decide to play a little trick on her. Okay, so we're just gonna leave Grace sitting in your car out on the street. <laughs> Don't you think that'd be funny? Yeah, <laughs> actually it would. Ben and Adrian have a really heartfelt conversation with each other and he decides that he'll move back in with her just as friends. So Adrian is really happy right now. In the next episode, Ashley gets a job flipping signs, which is kind of funny. Ricky tells Amy that Carly is blackmailing him. So she's about to lose her shit. She goes to the school counselor about it, but when have school counselors ever been helpful? So she's like, fine, I'll do it myself. Also, I am living for this soft glam era Amy is in. She looks good. Also, Tom and his girlfriend kind of break up and she's seeing his boss, I guess. So we move. Amy finds Carly at the university and goes off on her. I don't know what Ricky told you, but he did try to sleep with me. He slept with me before, you know. Oh, I know. Doesn't mean he'd ever sleep with you again. He would if I said yes. He has a problem, you know. He's done something about his problem. You're the one with the problem. She ends up telling Ricky that she went to go talk to Carly and he gets pissed off and leaves the apartment. Nora and Ben go to a restaurant together because he doesn't have any other friends, I guess. And they end up running into Nora's old girlfriend, Ollie and Ruben. Apparently Ollie and Nora broke up because Ollie wants to get married and Nora doesn't. So now she's kind of in a bad mood. Ruben tells Ben, you're not gonna be a dumbass and leave my daughter after what she went through, right? And he's like, no, what gave you that idea? The waiter at the restaurant somehow mixes up their orders and ends up serving Nora and Ben a bottle of wine. And Ben is 
like, well, damn, the day I've had, I deserve a drink. And Nora's like, listen, you don't want to get caught up in relying on alcohol, believe me. And Ben thinks she's just being dramatic. So to teach him a lesson, she drinks the bottle of wine after being sober for two years. Ben is just looking at her like, were you silent or were you silenced? Later on, Amy calls Toby about his weird ass sister, Carly. He's like, oh, her? Yeah, she's got some weird sex addiction thing going on. And she's like, oh, really? Damn, that's crazy. So Carly gets fired and Ricky gets accepted into college. In the next episode, Daniel spends the night over at Grace's house. Kathleen just be letting anything happen over there, but I'm not judging. As Grace is going back to her room, Jack stops her and says he really needs to talk to her later. And she's like, just tell me now. And he's like, okay. But before he does, Daniel steps out of the room like, what's good? I'll be right there, Jack. Just wanted to ask me something. Oh. All right, go ahead. She said she'd be right there. I heard. I like Daniel, he doesn't play. We already know Jack is very dumb, very, very, very dumb. So what he does next doesn't surprise me. Because him and Madison broke up, he has the bright idea to ask Grace to the school dance in front of Daniel. She's like, yeah, no, but I can hook you up with someone and he says, okay. Adrian and Ben are good again as they decided they would stay married till August, which is when Adrian would go back to college. Adrian also asks if they can go to the dance together and he says that's cool. Amy is also excited for the dance. So when she asks Ricky if they can go, he says no because he's boring and doesn't like to have any fun. Also, Amy does laundry while Ricky is hard at work. Nora leaves her job with Leo because he found her drunk in Ben's bed after Ben dropped her off last night. So she comes back to the butcher shop, but she's clearly very annoyed at the whole thing and she's taking it out on everyone. Ricky sees that there's something wrong with her and he checks up on her. She kind of gets defensive about it. So Ricky tells her to get her shit together or she's not gonna be in his life anymore. So she flees and no one can find her. Well, she ends up going to Ben's house, so she's good. Amy and Adrian are talking about the school dance and Adrian is holding John and keeps looking at him saying things like, oh, I can't wait for me and Ben to have a baby. And Amy thinks that's very peculiar. What do you mean? So she calls Grace about it and Grace is like, yeah, she's trying to get pregnant again. So they decide that one of them should tell Ricky so he can tell Ben what Adrian's trying to do. And he wants no part, so he's not going to. And Amy's like, fine, but you have to take me to the dance. So he does. Everyone ends up going to the dance, including Jack because Daniel let Grace go with him. But Daniel then shows up and takes back his girl while Jack and Grace are dancing. Adrian tries to seduce Ben, but it doesn't work. And Nora goes back to doing Alcoholics Anonymous. Adrian goes to the doctor to talk to her about having another baby with Ben. And luckily the doctor talks her out of that crazy idea. And now she's focused on something else. Adrian has decided that she now wants Ricky back. So Ben can go. But now that she wants him to leave, he's like, hell nah, I'ma stay my ass here, you can leave. He also tells her that he knew about her plan to seduce him and get pregnant. I know, all right? My dad told me. Ricky told him. Yeah, how about that, huh? Ricky, yeah. Ricky found out from Amy, Amy found out from Grace, who found out from you. So now Adrian is like, I'm about to beat this bitch up. And she ends up cutting off Grace and Grace being petty is like, okay, I've got something for you. She calls up Amy like, Adrian is over Ben and she's coming for your man. So now Amy is pissed off. Ben goes to Henry and Alice complaining about Adrian wanting to leave. And they're like, well, didn't you want to leave? And he's like, well, yeah, but I wanted to be the one to initiate it. Alice has had enough and she tells him, listen, you're young, good looking and rich. Go outside and live life for once without being weird about some girl. Nora also moves into George's house. Adrian comes by the house to be a little messy and tell Amy, but most importantly, Ricky, that she and Ben are done. Ben and I had a big fight and it's finally over. 
We both knew it wouldn't last, and uh, now it's really over. Amy is like, girl, get up. Ricky does not want you. And Adrian is like, really? Check his phone. Ben and Adrian have a talk and he tries to talk some sense into her. He decides that he's gonna move out and he'll leave the condo for Adrian. Also, Betty comes to Leo and says, I know you're not happy with me anymore, so I can leave. Make sure you take some of his money before you go. Amy confronts Ricky about what's on his phone from Adrian, and he's like, she left me a message, but I didn't engage or respond to her. They have a little fight, and he goes back to his apartment to be by himself, because that's a really good idea after what just happened. Amy is pretty sad and understands that he needs his space, so she lets him go, but she manages to keep his phone and listens to the message that Adrian left for him. Come on, call me back. You know you want to call me back. Aren't you bored just talking to Amy? What are you doing? I forgot my phone. Thought it was on the kitchen counter, but... I see it's not. So now Amy is worried that he's gonna fuck around and do something stupid with Adrian. In episode 10, Ricky is mad that Amy went through his phone and he's like, oh, you don't trust me. How was he gonna be mad at her when he didn't even tell her about the messages? And he's all like, well, I kept them just in case I needed evidence to show that I didn't do anything because I never even responded to her. So now Amy is staying at home while Ricky stays at the apartment for a little bit. Some random boy shows up at Ricky's apartment saying he might be getting arrested and he needs his help. Turns out it's because he sent a nude photo of his ex-girlfriend to everyone in his contacts. So now he needs someone to legally care for him. And Ricky's like, yeah, I want no part. Y'all stay safe out there. Apparently this boy Ethan used to live with Ricky and his foster parents at some point, but they kicked him out because he stole some of their shit. Amy is really sad about everything and she doesn't want to go to school. George is like, don't let this ruin your day. Literally everyone goes through each other's phones. It's healthy. And Amy is like, Ricky would never, he trusts me. And George is like, don't be dumb. Adrian finds Grace at school and apologizes to her, so they're cool again. Grace also tells her that she should forget about Ricky and try to find another guy. Look, if I could get you a really, really hot date, would you go out then? I mean, you and Ben, you're not divorced yet, right? But do you guys have like an agreement about that sort of thing? You're going to get me a really hot date. Yes, Daniel has friends, you know. Oh, so now that Grace got someone fine for once, it's Daniel has friends. Adrian is like, they better look like Daniel. Madison regrets breaking up with Jack and I'm about done with her. Lauren is back with Jesse, so she's really happy and I love that for her. Can I also say that Lauren's hair looks significantly better this season. She finally made that sewing work. My good sis looks good. Amy comes to school and asks them if they think think that Ricky's went through her phone and they're like, um, yeah, y'all literally live together. And she's like, huh, who would have thought? Adrian finds Amy at school and is like, hey girl, I heard you and Ricky broke up. How are you? And Amy is real close to scrapping, but she keeps it cute. Nora also goes back to working at Leo's office. Amy asks Ricky if he's ever gone through her phone. And he's like, uh, you know what? We clearly can't trust each other. So why should we even keep doing this? Ethan, that boy Ricky knows, ends up going to juvie. So I don't know why he even showed up. Adrian meets with Dante, the guy Grace set her up with, played by Bow Wow. She tells him she still loves her ex, but she thinks he's kind of cute. So they fool around a little bit. And finally, Amy and Ricky talk and they make up. Amy and Madison are talking and she tells her that she wants Ricky to propose to her. Ricky then talks to his son John and tells him he bought a ring for Amy and he's planning on proposing at graduation. Jack asks Madison if she would go with him to his graduation because he doesn't want to go alone and he can't ask Grace. And Madison's dumb ass says yes because everyone else is going and she doesn't want to feel left out. Adrian calls Grace freaking out because Dante Bow Wow hasn't called her back after what they did. And Grace is like, girl, don't worry. He's probably just busy. There are other guys. Amy is working overtime trying to get that ring from Ricky. Thanks again for the chocolate shake, Amy. You're welcome. Someone is looking for a proposal. 
Want to join me? Join you in the bath? It'd be fun. I could wash your hair. Henry has been having some sort of identity crisis because he sucks at tests and keeps bombing his SATs. But most importantly, he decides that he wants to do him and he breaks up with Alice. Lauren and Amy are clowning Madison for going to the graduation with Jack. Lauren is like, your self-esteem is clearly in the gutter. You need to stand up. Adrian goes to the school counselor begging for her to walk on stage with the other graduates since technically she doesn't graduate till summer. Her world is spinning out of control, especially after losing her baby, her marriage falling apart, and Dante Bow Wow won't call her back. So the counselor lets her walk. Adrian goes to Daniel's apartment to ask him what's tea about Dante Bow Wow. And she runs into this guy named Omar who was trying to take some food out of his fridge. Turns out Omar is Dante's brother and Adrian finds him kind of cute. Madison comes to her senses and tells Jack she's not going to the graduation with him. In the next episode, Jesse, Lauren's boyfriend, is having a little graduation party at his parents' lake house that's like 50 miles away. So clearly this is the event of the season. Madison and Lauren are begging for their parents to let them go. And they're like, yeah, that's not happening but then they fold so the girls are ready to party also amy wants to go to the party with ricky but that man hasn't had any fun since season one so we already know he doesn't want to go but he does say that graduation will be special with just the two of them grace and adrian are talking about the party and grace doesn't know if she should invite daniel because it's a high school party adrian is very happy because she's been talking to omar quite frequently <laughs> Omar, hey yourself. But a minute later, she tells Ricky she still loves him. Also, apparently Ricky is valedictorian. I'm not saying he's not smart. I'm just saying something's not adding up. Because he's valedictorian, he has to write a speech and he is not looking forward to that. Leo and Camille, his ex-assistant, are kind of dating now. The school counselor asked Jack to write a prayer speech for graduation. I'm pretty sure this isn't allowed and even if it was, why would you ask Jack out of all people? So Jack, being the loser he is, asks Grace for help with the prayer speech and she says okay because she's nice. George thinks Anne and Nora have a thing going on and he's real happy about that. Are you kidding? That would be great. That would mean the whole time I was cheating, I had a reason to cheat because my ex-wife is gay. <laughs> that would mean that nothing was my fault. It was all her fault. Betty goes to the airport because her mom just suddenly died and she ends up meeting a divorce lawyer that convinces her to go get that money. If the lawyer wasn't really creepy, I would be all for this. Omar comes by Adrian's apartment to do this. I can't stay. I just wanted to do that. I've been thinking about doing that since the last time I saw you. Made you forget about your old boyfriend for a few seconds, didn't I? Not your husband, your old boyfriend. You know, I just ruined him for you, right? Okay, let's relax. We didn't move that much. Adrian tells Grace about her earth shattering, world bending kiss with Omar. And she's like, well, damn, now I gotta kiss Ricky to make sure I don't want him anymore. Henry and Alice aren't speaking and they're sharing custody of Ben as if anyone would really want him, but they can't figure out how to share him. So they decide to not be friends with him anymore. Episode 13 is my favorite episode of the entire show. The mess that unfolds here is so catastrophic, it could level Mount Everest. Amy starts to suspect that Ricky is going to propose to her because John here keeps saying the word ring. Now, why would you tell a two-year-old your biggest secret? The school counselor finds Jack and is like, yeah, I kind of lied. You're not allowed to do a prayer. Luckily, he has absolutely one brain cell left and he used it to figure out that probably was the case. So he ended up writing a speech that would be appropriate for graduation. We should honestly applaud. He only gets one per season. Rumors start spreading around school that Ricky's gonna propose to Amy because Madison and Lauren still can't keep their mouths shut. Adrian and Ben talk to each other about it and they're like, yeah, okay. At the graduation ceremony, Jack and Ricky both give their speeches. At the end of his speech, he calls Amy up on stage and shocks everyone. Amy Jurgens. 
Will you marry me? <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, this would have pissed me off. I'm out here trying to graduate and you're proposing to someone? Escort them off the stage. Now that the graduation is over, it's time to party. Everyone is in attendance at Jesse's mega super lake house party and what else do they bust a fucking move to besides the most iconic pop song of all pop songs, Rihanna's SNM. Oh, what I would give to have been a late teen in the early 2010s. At the party, this girl keeps staring at Daniel and Grace, and she's like, who the fuck is that? Turns out it's his ex, but he's acting kind of weird about it. Ben meets a new girl named Dylan that seems to be kind of normal. Lauren gets annoyed with Jesse because he tries to give her a drink and she says she's not drinking or having sex with him, so he needs to chill. Raven, Daniel's ex, asks Jack to cut in on Grace and Daniel dancing, which of course he does. Daniel then takes this opportunity to go talk to Raven. I got some Oh, you're just gonna pretend that Grace isn't there? Oh, okay. And after talking to her, he now wants to leave. Omar says he'll go with him, but Grace and Adrian are trying to stay. Ricky and Amy now arrive at the party where everyone cheers for their new engagement. Somehow Ricky finds out that Adrian has been wanting to kiss him and with Amy's okay, they kiss. Omar's pissed off because she just kissed Ricky in front of him. Let's go, Daniel. Good night. Wait, what is wrong with you? It was totally disrespectful. Disrespectful of me and yourself. The next morning, Lauren wakes up and doesn't find Jesse by her side, so she goes around the house trying to figure out where he went. Why wasn't he next to her? She eventually finds him, though, in bed with Madison. Lauren, I I'm not dressed. Okay, look, I'm sorry about last night, but I told you I wasn't gonna drink or do any of that stuff. And I told you I wasn't gonna sleep with you, so I don't know why you got so upset with me again. Uh-oh. Oh my God. Madison could have stayed under the blanket. Did you wanna get caught? They both Jamie Foxx, T-Pain, and Glee blame it on the alcohol, but Lauren is not having it, so she tells Amy and Ricky to take her ass the fuck back home. Grace asks Jack to take her home, and he goes off to find Adrian so they can go, but he finds Henry and Adrian in bed together. While Adrian is getting dressed to leave, Alice then walks in on them. Adrian and Henry are very dumb, diddy, dumb, 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 because how did this seem like a good idea to any of you guys? Anyways, Alice is like, okay, Henry, see how many friends you have left because Ben is going to leave you. While waiting for Adrian, Grace and Jack kiss just because. Ricky and Amy talk and are like, wow, that was such a crazy party. In episode 14, Ben and Dylan are getting a lot closer and he even asks her out on a date. Ricky asks Amy when she wants to get married and shockingly, she's not in any rush. She just wanted the ring to keep him away from everyone else. Daniel calls Grace apologizing for leaving the party and she feels super guilty because she kissed Jack. Jack then comes in the room so they can talk about their kiss and you know what happens. You want me to kiss you again? No. Yeah. Madison goes to Lauren trying to apologize for getting with her man, and obviously Lauren does not want to talk to her or be friends with her. Alice spills the beans on Henry and Adrian sleeping together, so now Ben is fuming. He ends up breaking his date with Dylan so he can go beat Henry's ass. Not really, we know Ben can't fight. Ben goes to confront Henry about it, and Henry's like, I was seduced just like you were. You get that, right? And Ben is like, no. He also tells them that they are no longer friends and never will be ever again. Right after that, Dylan and her friends come to his house so Dylan can ask why he broke off their date. How they found his address, I don't know. 
I'm kind of scared. He invites them to his room and they ask him if it's cool if they smoke a little weed. And he's like, sure, why not? That was real stupid because they end up getting caught by Leo and Dylan's parents. Raven, Daniel's ex, sends Daniel a little photo of Jack and Grace kissing at that lake house party. And when he goes to confront Grace about it, she somehow flips the script on him. You gave me the feeling that you don't care about me. You care about Jack. You still care about Jack. I didn't give you any of that. Your old girlfriend gave you that. When she texted you that picture, that's exactly what she wanted to do. To make it so you'd never trust me again. So, you know what? Forget it. Go back to your old girlfriend if that's what you want to do. This is why I will never root for her. Not only did you not take accountability, you fumbled Daniel because of loser Jack? I don't think she's very smart. So after that, Daniel breaks up with her. Ashley comes back from her trip with Toby and she tells everyone she got accepted into a college in Florida. So even though she was a year behind Amy, she's now going to be a year ahead of her in college. I know that's right. I know that's right. Ashley never lost focus. Amy's just like, yeah, well, Ricky proposed to me. All of my dreams came true. And Ashley clears her with this. Oh, you always dreamed of having a baby in high school and then having to marry the baby's father? Well, I guess dreams do come true. Dante Bow Wow randomly comes back from his little backpacking trip across Europe and he comes by to see Adrian. She tells him that she's been going out with his brother and he's like, yeah, that's kind of weird. I'm gonna go. Adrian and Grace talk and they realize they've made their entire lives about men. So to keep them on the right track, they decide to live together in the summer, go to summer school and give up on boys for a bit. My very obvious outfit change is due to the fact that my camera died and I got hungry, so. We pushed it back another day. Also, I don't know if you can tell, I got a new lens. I don't know, am I am I giving Arianka? I don't know. In episode 15, Amy wants to go to summer school all of a sudden and Ricky is very annoyed because she's never once stated that she's wanted to go up until now. And on top of that, she normally works in the summer. So now there's not gonna be any money. Are we surprised that Amy would rather go to summer school than work? No, but Ricky can't do anything about it, so she ends up going. Grace moves in with Adrian, even though her mom specifically told her she can't, but what's new? Remember that little pact they had about having a boyless summer? Yeah, Adrian folded. She's still seeing Omar and she just didn't tell Grace. Grace finds him in the apartment and she's pissed because not only did she lie to her mom by saying she wasn't gonna move in with Adrian, but she also lied about going to med camp. Kathleen left to go to the airport to go visit her husband husband in Zimbabwe and she's literally calling everyone trying to figure out where the hell her daughter is. Leo makes Ben go to summer school because he keeps making dumb decisions and him and Dylan's parents also won't let them see each other. Ethan that boy with legal issues that Ricky did not want to help gets out of juvie so now Ricky has to watch him. Ricky's mom makes Ethan go to summer school and Amy says that she'll take him which pisses Ricky off even more. He wants no part of the shenanigans. Amy's all like, stop telling me what to do. But then she comes back and asks him for lunch money. It's right where we put it last night. It's our money. My money and your money. You don't have to ask. It's right here. Everyone goes to summer school and no one is talking to Madison and Henry. And Ben shockingly is still kind of cool with Adrian, even though he's not speaking to Henry. She tells him that he should just forgive him. It wasn't that big of a deal. And he's like, no. Ethan ends up getting in trouble for stealing condoms from the nurse's office. And Ricky tells Amy, oh, I thought you had no problem watching him. And Amy's like, my bad. Remember when Ethan was watching when Ricky took some money out of that box to give to Amy? Yeah, this happens. I like the kid, but you have no idea what he's capable of. You let Ethan in the apartment alone after everything he did at school today? Ha <laughs> 
Okay, Amy gets a cute 3.5 points from that. I chuckled a little bit. In the next episode, the girls are still not speaking to Madison and their dads are like, ladies, what's tea? Lauren tells her dad that Madison stole her idea for a school paper and he thinks that's a lie because he's all like, isn't Madison like a journalist or something? Why would she steal your shit? Madison tells her dad that Lauren is mad at her because she got the same backpack as her and she's like always copying her and wants everything that she has and Madison's dad being the dumbass he is believes her because what else are teenage girls gonna fight about? So Madison and Lauren's dads call each other so they can like get the girls together and they can just like squash their beef and they also call George so they can do it at his house even though George has no idea what's going on. I know something's going on? I got the phone bill today. Ames? George is like, yeah, me and Amy have no part in this. And Madison is like, um, yeah, she does. She took Lauren's side. And Lauren told her dad what actually happened. So he's like, um, there's no sides. You made a very dumb decision about my daughter's man. You're right and there's a wrong. And it was wrong to sleep with Lauren's boyfriend. <laughs> Nobody slept with anybody's boyfriend. Oh dear Lord, this isn't about a backpack? Don't piss me off. Kathleen calls Grace and is like, Tom told me you're not at med camp and you're in summer school, so you can stop lying to me. She also tells Grace that her dad apparently had a girlfriend that he visited a lot in Africa and turns out they had a son. If there's anything a man will do, he will have the audacity because how is he gonna have Kathleen flabbergasted while being dead? He talks to Kathleen and asks if he can stay with them because his mom is trying to send him to boarding school in Paris and he doesn't wanna go for some reason. He says he also really wants to meet Grace and Tom, but Kathleen isn't too sure about that. In the next episode, Amy is acting irritated, which isn't that surprising, but she's acting more irritated than usual. She wants to go out with Lauren because it's summertime and you know the girls are young and everyone keeps telling her that she can't. But Ricky's like, okay, clearly you're very upset, so just go out with Lauren. And she goes over to Lauren's house complaining about her life and how she just wants to be single and carefree and she's having second thoughts about getting married. And Lauren's like, um, that's kind of insane. Maybe you should be telling this information to Ricky. And wants to go to Europe to just travel and enjoy herself and she also wants to take Robbie with her which makes George very annoyed. She's also trying to convince everyone that she's not gay for some reason. Ben goes to Dylan's house to ask for permission to date Dylan but it kind of flops. Ben for some reason tells them that Leo used to be married to Betty and he also tells them that Betty used to be a prostitute so now they really don't like him considering they already know that he got Adrian pregnant. Adrian and Omar are still dating and it's actually going really well. Grace and Tom know about their half brother and Grace is freaking out because she doesn't want anything to do with him and I don't blame her. Leo finds out that Dylan's parents know about Betty so he calls her dad to go off. No caller ID, huh? This better not be you, Ben Boykovich, calling at this time of the night. It's not Ben, it's me, Leo Boykovich. And I got news for you, Mr. Pudding Pop. My ex-wife is not a prostitute but Dylan's dad still isn't with it. Amy tells Ricky that she's late, so he freaks out and goes to get a pregnancy test. And she's like, oh, um, actually we're good. I just got my period. Kathleen ends up bringing Jacob, their half brother home to stay with them. In episode 18, Ricky has a day off of work, so he wants to take John to go to the beach and Amy is mad because she wants to go. And Ricky is like, well, you have that summer school that you said you had to go to, so you can't go. I love Petty Ricky. George is bored at home with Robbie since Anne went to Europe, so he calls Ricky to ask what he's doing with John. And Ricky says, oh, um, we're going to the beach. And George is like, oh, okay, take me and Robbie with you. And Ricky's like, don't you hate the beach? And George is like, oh, 
Who said that? Ethan finds Amy at school and he complains to her about how he hates it there. And Amy is tired of his antics, so she goes off on him. Well, let me tell you, it'll make this a good experience for you. It's all about attitude. You need to change your attitude, you know that? And he's like, well, damn, what did I do to you? Dylan and her friends surprise Ben by showing up at his school to hang out with him. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Why don't y'all just meet him at the mall or something? George convinces Ricky to just do beach in his living room because he hates the beach. The school counselor tells Grace that she can get Jacob into summer school there. And Grace is like, not on my watch, you're not. Somehow everyone finds out about Jacob and the girlies plus Ben are talking about it in class. Jacob starts summer school and Ethan hangs out with him because he has no friends. Betty and Leo are divorced now, so she decides to use her free time to go to college, so good for her. Grace is pissed off that Jacob had the audacity to come up in here and ruin her life. And you know what? I understand her. Adrian tells her, look, I get it, but Jacob shouldn't be punished for what your father did. Lauren forgives Madison because she's tired of being angry all the time, but she still doesn't really wanna be friends with her. Dylan's parents allow her to date Ben, and Leo said, and I quote, if you get into any trouble with that girl, you're on your own. Remember that. In the next episode, Ben and Dylan have their first date. George is acting a little weird about the whole Grace and Kathleen and half brother Jacob's son thing when he's talking about it with Amy because he keeps defending Grace and Amy thinks that's a little suspicious. Ben being dumb thought it was a good idea to take Dylan to a restaurant that he used to go to all the time with Amy and Adrian, but She's not that mad at it. Jacob wants Tom to take him to see Grace at her apartment. And when Kathleen says no, he responds with this. No offense, but maybe I'm a little more mature than American guys my age. My mother usually lets me make my own personal decisions. Kathleen is better than me. I would have had him on the plane back home that night. Tom says he'll drive him anyway, so they go. Kathleen tells George that she doesn't wanna be married anymore and he tells her she deserves to be happy. Grace and Jack start hanging out again as friends a lot, but they kiss every now and then. Tom and Jacob get lost on the way to Grace's, so a police officer ends up pulling them over. And when the police officer asks Tom for his license, this man gives him a fishing license because that's the only one he has. Jacob is here like, you idiot, I'm gonna get deported. But the officer recognizes that Tom is Dr. Bowman's son, so he lets them go. In episode 20, since Tom drove, even though Kathleen told him he wasn't allowed to, he now has to move back into the house. Kathleen tells Grace that she needs to talk to Jacob and she's like, mm, I'll think about it. And Kathleen is like, let me make you a deal. If you make good with Jacob, I'll let you move into the guest house for your senior year. And Grace is like, oh, say less. On a side note, Ben and Adrian are officially divorced. So she comes by the butcher shop to say no hard feelings. And Dylan finds her there and she don't like that. Amy talks to Nora about George and Kathleen and Nora wants no part. But somehow Amy cons her into telling what's going on. It wouldn't be the worst thing if my dad was in love with Kathleen. No? No. All right then. He's in love with his first wife. Always has been, always will be. That's my opinion. <laughs> Ow. John will tussle for his mom. We gotta respect that. Grace and Jacob talk and they go back and forth about their time together with their dad. You like to hunt, big game. We, we went quite a few times. He's a very good shot. We used to go to the zoo together all the time. We were known at the zoo. By the zookeepers or the animals? Both. I love a good banter. This is funny. Anyways, they're kind of on good terms now. Dylan comes by to see Adrian, and Adrian is very confused as to why she's there. Ben finds Dylan there and is like, what the fuck are you doing here? She's like, well, I wanted to get to know your ex-wife that you keep talking to. And Adrian is tired. Why are y'all here? And finally, George and Kathleen decide to start dating. In episode 21, the school counselor tells Amy that she's very close to failing summer school. Are we shocked? 
absolutely not. Amy's friends from New York pop up at their apartment with their two kids to stay with them and Ricky is not having it. He calls Amy and tells her they gotta go. Because Dylan has a problem with Amy and Adrian, Ben cuts off Alice to make Dylan feel more comfortable. I'm a little on the fence about that because technically that's good boyfriend behavior, but Dylan never asked him to cut off Alice, so. Ethan sets him and Jacob up on a little double date at Jacob's place, but says they can't tell Kathleen about it. Ricky decides to be nice and watch Amy's friend's kids while they go out and explore California. Madison and Lauren make up, so they're cool again. Amy is hard at work in the counselor's office trying to catch up and everyone keeps popping into the office to chat and she's like, guys, I don't have time for this. Grace and Jack are still kissing friends, I guess, but he wants to have sex and she's not going to do that unless they have some sort of commitment. And he's like, yeah, um, I don't know about all that. What do you mean you can't do that? You spent your entire high school years practically stalking her. Omar asks Adrian to marry him and she's like, I'm 18. I was literally just married. Are you stupid? And he's like, okay, okay. There's no rush, take your time. Ricky's mom comes by to tell Jacob that Ethan's not coming because he got caught sneaking out of the house. She also tells him he should stay away from Ethan. He's no good. Ben and Amy have also been talking again, but she hasn't told Ricky that. In the next episode, Amy tells Ricky that she's been talking to Ben a lot more and he's not that mad at it. And Amy's mad that he's not mad. How dare he not feel some type of way about this? And he's like, okay, I don't wanna talk about this anymore. When do you wanna get married? And she's like, I don't know, the 4th of July. And he's like, Really? Somehow everyone finds out that their wedding is going to be on the 4th of July and they all think that's a very weird and random date. Henry and Alice decide to be friends. And honestly, I want better for her. Ben also forgives him too. Jack changes his mind and wants to be with Grace and also have a future with her after like, 24 hours and she says she'll think about it. Adrian tells Omar she's not ready to get married, but she's okay with committing to him for the next year and just seeing what happens after that. And he's cool with that. Grace tells her mom that she's dumb for going back to George because George is just going to leave her for Anne. And Kathleen is like, I know for a fact he's not leaving me to go back to her because she's gay but you can't tell anyone about that. And Grace is gagged. And literally five seconds after that, Grace texts a bunch of people saying that Anne is gay. Amy finds out that everyone knows about Anne and she's pissed off at George because clearly he told Kathleen. In the next episode, everyone now thinks Amy is gay because Anne is gay and they think it's hereditary or something. I can now see why all the kids are in summer school. Ben wants to transfer to Dylan's school and Henry and Alice are not happy about that. Grace and Adrian talk about the concept of being gay and like, have they ever like questioned their sexuality? I've thought about kissing a woman anyway. Who? I don't know. Not me. You know, of course not you. Why not me? I thought about kissing you. Oh, Leo tells Ben that he's not transferring to Dylan's school because it's like 32K a year. And Ben is like, yeah, okay. Why are you acting like we're not rich? Adrian is trying to bait Grace by seducing her so she can admit she's gay or something. I don't know. It's kind of funny. They talk about if either of them have ever kissed a girl and Grace tells Adrian to kiss her. Grace calls Jack over and tells him she kissed Adrian, so now they have to be together. She also moves into the guest house because she doesn't want to live with Adrian anymore. Adrian goes around telling people that she and Grace kissed. Ashley and Anne come back from Europe, and Anne knows that George told Kathleen she's gay. In the next episode, Grace questions if she's gay now, and she doesn't want to be friends with Adrian anymore. Leo finds out about the little $1,200 Ben spent on applying to Dylan's school, so he's officially done with Ben. Ben is like, but dad, I really wanna go so I can challenge my mind. Ben then gets an email and he got into the school. Anne ends up coming out to Amy and Amy doesn't react that well to it. Gay. Yes, I am gay. 
No, you're not. You might think you are, but you're not. You got married. You had children. You're in love with dad. You just don't want to admit it. Are you claiming to be gay because dad's going back to his first wife? How is she gonna tell her mom she's not gay? On the plus side, Ashley and George are very supportive of her and just want her to be happy. Ben and Dylan sneak into her school to make some s'mores in the science lab with the Bunsen burner. Omar finds out that Adrian kissed Grace, so he breaks up with her. After coming back home, Leo tells Ben he wasted that $1,200 because Dylan's school just burned down and Ben is scrambling, freaking out because he now thinks that he and Dylan burned it down. So Ben then Ben calls Alice and they end up having sex. Amy comes to her senses and goes home to apologize to Anne. She also tells Ricky, let's just forget about the wedding. Let's just run away and get married. And he says, fuck it, let's do it. Okay, I don't wanna waste any more time. Let's get into season five. In the first episode, Ricky and Amy are running out of a chapel all happy and Amy's holding a bouquet. They get in the car and Marry You by Bruno Mars is playing in the background. Gonna marry you. The counselor gives Adrian her diploma, but she's not all that happy about it. The counselor also tells her that Omar is going to be student teaching in the fall at the school. Why she would tell Adrian this, I don't know. Ricky and Amy check into a hotel and tell the desk clerk that they're on their honeymoon. So they get all the extra perks of being on their honeymoon, like getting an upgrade on their room. Adrian comes by to complain to Grace about her getting a diploma doesn't feel all that special. And Grace still feels very weird around her since they kissed. So she's like, sorry to you, but I don't really wanna be friends with you anymore, but good luck with your life. Ben feels guilty about sleeping with Alice. So he tries to gaslight Henry by saying he's still mad at him for sleeping with Adrian. And Henry is confused. He thought they were good. So he apologizes to him again and says he'll do everything he can to gain back his trust. Leo overhears Ben talking to Dylan about the fire at her school. Like, there's no evidence that we had anything at all to do with that fire. Dylan, you and I both know we were in the lab with a Bunsen burner that we probably left burning when we left. I doubt it. Ricky and Amy's parents are starting to wonder if they just ran off and got married. George finds Ashley and Toby in bed together and he's ready to just disown everyone. Ben is really freaking out about what happened at the school and he can't take it anymore. So he breaks up with Dylan or he tries to. And I can't handle this. Ben Boykovich, you are not breaking up with me unless you don't want my dad to protect you too. What? I'm joking. Toby goes to talk to George and George tells him that he knows Amy and Ricky went to elope and Anne doesn't know. In the next episode, Anne finds out that George knew of Amy and Ricky's plans to elope and she's pissed the fuck off. Amy is stalling on going back home because she doesn't want to deal with everyone being in her business. Adrian goes to Ben's because Grace doesn't want to be friends with her and Omar just broke up with her and well, she doesn't like anyone else. Leo goes to Dylan's to talk to her dad about his criminal daughter, but it flops because her parents don't believe she actually did anything. Dylan's dad is more on the, if they did do something, let's drop it side. But Leo does not get down like that. Ben is moping around because he heard that Amy and Ricky eloped, so he faints in front of Adrian's father. Amy and Ricky finally get home and Ethan tells them that Ben went to the hospital. The ambulance just left with Ben in it. What? Yeah, they brought him out of Adrian's house in one of those stretcher things. What happened? Went into toxic shock following a brain aneurysm or heart attack or something. Clearly, he is not a reliable source of information. Ashley gets accepted into a cooking school and she's ready to go like yesterday. Amy and Ricky talk to their parents and tell them that they eloped and got married. Anne feels really hurt by the fact that she wasn't at Amy's wedding. George is especially happy that Ricky and Amy got married because he wants better for Amy, which is actually really nice. And finally, Ben tells his dad that he might be going to jail for what he just did. In episode three, Ben is about to lose his shit because of Amy and Ricky getting married. Also, Dylan now goes to his school since hers burned down. She also gives Amy a big ass cake that she now has to wheel down the hallway. A flash mob randomly breaks out in the middle of the school hallway. Just say I do. Tell me right now, baby, tell me right now, baby.
There's a reason why none of these kids were on High School Musical. Kenny Ortega would have never let them on the set. Leo gives Ricky a wedding gift, and by wedding gift, I mean a lot of money. And he also offers him a full-time employment for after he graduates at his business. But Ricky is acting a little weird about it. The school counselor asks Amy to mentor a girl that could really use her guidance. And Amy's like, I've got enough to deal with, so... No. Turns out it's a pregnant girl named Kathy that just moved to school there, played by Sierra Ramirez. Their meeting doesn't go all that well because Kathy does not want Amy's advice. She's not trying to be married like her. She also plans on giving the baby up for adoption. Ricky's mom gives Ricky her parents' wedding band since he and Amy don't have any. He accepts them, but he's still acting really weird about it. Omar bumps into Ben at the school because he's gonna be teaching there, and Ben's dumb ass calls him a pet because he dated Adrian and now he's teaching at a school full of young girls. And Omar is like, do you really wanna fuck with me? Okay, okay, I'm gonna report you right now. Oh yeah, what are you gonna do about it? Punch me? <laughs> Go ahead. I would risk getting arrested as well as lose everything I've worked for at college the past four years just to punch you. Pervert. All right, that does it. I'm gonna report you right now. Can someone punch him though? I would enjoy that a lot. Not even 30 seconds later, he tells Amy he loves her. Dylan's friends overhear what he just said to Amy and they tell Dylan. Adrian and Ricky run into each other at the college campus and they're pretty cordial. Not really, Adrian is teasing him about them most likely seeing each other a lot more often and Ricky does not want anything to do with her. This episode is also very sad because it's the final one we see Ashley in because she's going off to cooking school in Italy. Goodbye to the realist to ever do it. Ricky and Amy watch their wedding video and it's kind of interesting. We don't have to do this. We can go somewhere else this weekend or another weekend. I know, but I don't know how to get out of this. We already paid him. Let's just make a run for it. You go. I'll stop him if he comes after you. No, I'm too scared. He's crazy. Go, go. Are you sure? Look at him. He probably doesn't even have a license to marry. Just run, Amy, run. Thanks. We, we changed our mind. So it turns out they never got married. In episode four, Ricky's starting to hyperventilate and shit because he can't take lying to everyone any longer. And Amy is like, relax. Let's just let everyone think we're married and then get married for real for real later. It's fine. Ben is trying to figure out what to do about Dylan's school and Leo has had enough of his antics. Madison and Lauren want to throw Amy a wedding party reception thing and Amy doesn't doesn't want that. So they end up calling Amy's mom about it to include her and Amy hears them doing this. So she calls her mom and says, my husband doesn't want a wedding party, so no wedding party. Grace decides to be a Christian again because she kissed Adrian. So she finds Jack at his college football practice to recruit him to the faith again so they can be together. And he's like, yeah, I'm good. Grace then finds Adrian and apologizes to her and tells her she should go to church with her and Adrian is like you're crazy leave me alone. Ben confesses to Ruben that he was at the school the night of the fire. So now the police are talking to him about it. Anne goes to the butcher shop to talk to Ricky about having a wedding party since she thinks he's the one that doesn't want it. Let her have a wedding. It's not a matter of me letting her. Wait Amy said I don't want a wedding. She said she wants a wedding but I don't. That's what she said this morning. All right then. All right? Yeah. Oh, he's real petty. I love it. Leo tells Camille that the police aren't gonna investigate that much because the fire was due to a leak but he's still gonna let Ben think he's going to jail because he's tired of Ben being stupid. Give him father of the year, quite frankly. But Ben kind of fucked it up because he confessed to it. Ricky tells Amy that they're having a wedding party and she is not happy about it. The reason she didn't want one in the first place is because Anne is now gay and she and her dad are never going to be together ever again. In the next episode, Ethan meets Kathy, that pregnant girl that Amy's mentoring and she's kind of feisty she goes off on literally everyone that talks to her. I love funny people. You know who else loves funny people? Is Jesus. Oh no. I hope you're not talking about Jesus Martinez. Who's that? A good friend of mine. But I'd love to meet him. Why don't you bring him to church on Sunday? Why don't you go to hell? 
She's funny, I like her. Turns out Ethan does too, and now Amy fucked up. Also, Ben learns that he's not actually responsible for the fire and he's not gonna go to jail, so good for him, I guess. Ricky, Jack, and Adrian officially start their new college era. And Ricky ends up running into this girl Clementine he knew when he was younger. George tells Kathleen that he wants to be with her forever and get married. Episode six isn't all that interesting. Grace convinces everyone to go to church and they all just kind of vent about their feelings to each other. Amy sees George and Kathleen at the church together and she feels really hurt because she feels like George is abandoning her and her family is now broken. Ben tries to convince his dad to let him see Dylan again and Leah was like, you really are the dumbest person alive, aren't you? Ben and Dylan then concoct a plan to see each other by saying that Henry is dating Dylan and Ben is dating Alice because that makes perfect sense. Grace and Jack get back together but she says they're not gonna have sex and he's like, okay. George finds a video of Amy and Ricky getting married so now now he knows they've been lying. In the next episode, Amy tells Kathy that she should make some more girlfriends so she's not alone all the time, and more importantly, so that she's not with Ethan. And Kathy says this. I don't like girls. They're catty and mean and... Well, I like guys. Maybe I don't like her anymore. Amy tries to help by talking to some girls, but they end up clowning her. And because they're mean, Kathy likes them, I guess. So she starts hanging out with them. Grace finds Amy and says that they should hang out together since their parents are now together. And Amy doesn't really want to, but she agrees to do it. So she calls Ricky to say that Grace and Jack are gonna come over to do some homework. And he's like, what do me and Jack have to do with anything? But he folds and says, okay. He also asks if his friend Clementine can come over as well. And Amy says, okay. Adrian and Clementine have some sort of beef because I guess they both care about Ricky, which is kind of concerning. Clementine also tells her that Ricky is introducing her to some guy that she knows. Ethan meets Kathy's new friends and he does not like them. Alice doesn't wanna go along with the stupid plan that Ben and Dylan made and Henry's trying to do everything he can to make Ben happy. So he's like, come on, what's the big deal? And Alice is like, would you still help Ben if you knew me and him had sex? He's pissed the fuck off now and he's gonna go on that date with Dylan but not to help Ben. Leo finds out about Ben's little plan and he's like now I know you didn't think you were smarter than me now. So he makes Ben stay home and turns out it was Alice that told Leo about the switch off date. Henry goes to Dylan's house and Dylan's parents love him and Dylan's getting annoyed because he's stalling on them leaving on their date. If we're gonna be in a relationship, we wanna get off to a good start. You know what? Why don't we just hang out here? Do you like board games? Henry. Clementine comes over to the apartment and Amy is seeing her and Ricky a key keying with each other. And she's like, what's going on here? Ricky then introduces her to that guy he wanted her to meet. Nice to meet you. And who's this? That's the guy I wanted you to meet. <laughs> That's our son, John. Oh, I would have had to throw hands on Ricky. Grace and Jack come by and Clementine sees them together and is just like, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna go. And Grace figures out that he fucked her. Are we shocked? No. Ben comes by Leo and Camille and has the audacity to tell Leo he can't tell him who to date if he can't tell Leo who he can date. And this happens. You two do not belong together. You're too fat and she's too thin. She probably can't even get pregnant. If she could, she would have trapped you by now. <laughs> My wish finally came true. Someone punched Ben. Let's celebrate. Henry tells Dylan that he really likes her and that he wants to see her again, so he kisses her. In the next episode, Amy is starting to get a little suspicious of Ricky and Clementine's friendship, so she wants to plan that wedding party like now. Ben is off his meds or something because he gives a little speech in the hallway to all the freshmen. Just listen to my words and heed my warning. No good thing can come of this of high school. I personally wouldn't take any advice from Ben, but 
okay. Amy talks to George about her issues with Ricky and Clementine and shockingly, he says she can trust him. Leo talks to Ben and apologizes to him for not doing a better job of keeping him away from Amy as he realizes he's partly to blame for Ben acting this way. Ben is like, okay, are you gonna let me see Dylan? And Leo was like, um, no. And Ben is like, well then fuck your apology. In episode nine, the parents that want to adopt Kathy's baby meet up with her and Ethan at a restaurant. Why she would bring him along? I don't know. He talks shit the entire time and he's pissing them off. Are you financially stable? Yep, I am. You know what, I'll give you a hundred bucks to shut up. Why? You hiding something? So she texts Amy to get Ricky to take Ethan home and he's annoyed because he has college homework to do. Adrian goes to the bookstore and while she's waiting in line, this creepy guy behind her tries to like flirt with her. She tells Clementine about it and she kicks him out immediately and calls the police. Apparently he pimps out girls to different men and Adrian is now freaked out. Ben finds Henry at Dylan's and he tries to get her back or something. And Henry is like, did you want her when you slept with Alice? And Dylan is gagged, so she kicks Ben out and lets Henry inside. Kathy drops Ethan because he almost ruined the adoption and he cannot understand what he did wrong here. He was just trying to look out for her. I would say him and Ben are tied for being the dumbest people here. That same guy that harassed Adrian comes to Jack's door trying to offer him up some girls and he wants no part of that. Some girl then shows up at Jack's offering herself up for $50 and he doesn't want anything to do with her, but she needs that money now. Hey, not a very nice person. Just trying to survive. If I don't come back with my quota, I get the crap beat out of me. By who? Who do you think? My pimp? Right as he gives her the money, the campus police show up and catch him paying her. But the press puts it in the newspaper as him saving her. Ben ends up apologizing to Henry after talking to his dad and realizing what a terrible person he's been. And Henry forgives him, but they're still gonna fight each other over Dylan, so. In the next episode, the story of Jack saving that girl from prostitution gets very popular and even the news is covering the story. The school counselor tells Ben that he got into Hudson University in New York and he tells her he's still in love with Amy and will never let her go. Let's just sit in silence for a bit while I calm myself down from being irritated. Kathy tells Ethan that they should stay away from each other until she gives birth because he's being annoying. Anne starts planning the wedding with George's gay coworker from season one. I'm kind of glad she's not planning the wedding by herself. I don't trust her taste. Leo gets married to Camille, so good for them. Amy gets a letter from Hudson University, the same school that Ben got into, and Ricky opens it before she sees it. Amy finds out that Ricky opened her letter and he's like, yeah? And what about it? Omar and Adrian talk about living together, but he's stalling on moving in because he wants them to get married. And she's like, ugh, we're back to that. Ben decides to be petty and calls Amy to tell her that he got into Hudson University. And now Ricky is pissed off. The episode ends with the pimp that approached Adrian coming to Jack's dorm holding a bat and locking the door. In episode 11, Jack ends up in the hospital because that pimp beat him up real bad and Grace is super worried for him. I'll feel bad for Jack just this one time. Ricky still feels some type of way about Amy getting into Hudson University and asks her if she still wants to get married. Amy goes to school and tells Ben to leave her alone. He's wrecking her marriage. And he's like, well, I think you should leave Ricky behind because I know he's not really your husband. Did you know that marriages are public record? Yeah, you can just look them up on the internet. Anyone can do it. She then calls Ricky and is like, Ben knows we lied, so we have to get married now. 
And Ricky's like, no, I don't think you want to be married. Dylan leaves to go to another school and she says bye to Ben. Leo and Camille decide to take in that girl that approached Jack and have her live with them, which is really nice. Ethan and Kathy are cool again and he's trying to support her decision to give the baby up for adoption. Everyone goes to the hospital to see what the news is on Jack and his parents ask everyone to pray with them. So it's not looking good. The next episode is a Christmas related episode. I don't like Christmas episodes of TV shows. They give me this weird feeling in my stomach. So we're gonna go through it really quick. Jack is in a coma and Grace is by his side wishing for him to wake up. Everyone goes to this toy warehouse to celebrate Christmas. Kathy goes into labor and gives birth to her daughter. And Jack wakes up from his coma that everyone calls a Christmas miracle. In episode 13, Kathy is going back and forth about whether or not to go back to Texas because her parents want her there with them. They're the ones that sent her away to have a baby somewhere else, but okay. Ethan has the bright idea to go to Texas to convince her parents to let Kathy stay. I need Ethan to get a job and stop bothering everyone. Obviously, Kathy is like, no. Amy buys her wedding dress from a thrift store and it's the ugliest piece of clothing one could ever lay their eyes on. Everyone hates the dress. Like Amy does a fashion show at each person's house to show them the dress and they're all like, yeah, that ain't it. And she's like, guys, no, you just don't get the vision. Y'all aren't fashion it girls like me. Ricky seems to think Amy got the dress as a way to get out of the wedding. And she's like, that sounds like a personal problem. I don't know what to tell you. Amy sends a picture of herself in the wedding dress to Ben and he's talking about it with his new adopted sister. And she figures out that Amy and Ricky aren't married because Ben isn't a good liar. So. She tells Leo. Also, Anne starts dating this new woman, so good for her. David, Anne's ex-boyfriend comes back and is like, turns out I can have children and I think Robbie might be mine, so I need that DNA test. Ben finds Ethan and is like, you wanna fight for your woman? I'll take you to the airport right now. In episode 14, after taking Ethan to the airport, Ben is acting weirdly happy, like season one happy. Omar finishes his student teaching job at the high school. We never saw him actually teaching any children, but okay. Ethan goes to Texas to convince Kathy's parents to let her stay in California, but I don't really care about Ethan and his antics, so they somehow get convinced and she comes back. In some happy news, Omar proposes to Adrian. I am a lover for Adrian's happiness. Also, Omar pitched an idea to like a production film company and they bought his idea, so they gave him a payout of like $1 million. So now he's rich. So Adrian picked the right man. George meets with David to tell him he already had a DNA test done on Robbie and he knows that Robbie isn't his but David wasn't there. And now David wants to claim Robbie as his. In the next episode Anne is pissed off that George lied about being Robbie's father and Amy is going off on him. And he's here like well I had to lie. David wasn't here. What did you want me to do? And Amy is like um tell the truth, now you might not see Robbie. Because Anne has other shit to worry about, she's not going to handle or plan Ricky and Amy's wedding, even though she's the one that wanted them to have it in the first place. Jack has been having PTSD about what happened to him, but won't actually deal with it because he keeps telling everyone he's okay and just wants to move on with his life. Chloe, Ben's adopted sister, starts school and she and Kathy really hit it off and they start being friends. Ethan doesn't want Kathy to be friends with her and honestly, he needs to stop being weird and get a life. Also, where the fuck did Jacob go? Adrian goes around showing everyone her brand new ring. I just know that ring is big. Ricky and Adrian talk and she gets the sense that there's something off with him and Amy. Nora tells Anne that she should forgive George. His heart was in the right place and Anne says this. You're gonna be getting a new place to live because I'm evicting George. And for another thing, if you weren't all that happy about Amy and Ricky being married, that's great. Cause they're not. Yeah, so now everyone knows they're not married. In the next episode, Ricky starts having dreams about being in bed with Clementine. We'll get married. Married or not, this is wrong. This is really wrong. I've never cheated on Amy. Never. And I never wanted to. And again. <laughs>
clearly he's tired of her. Jack is refusing to go back to his dorm and he insists on staying in Grace's guest house but assures everyone that he's perfectly fine. And Grace is like, go get some help or we're done. And he's like, Ricky and Amy are fighting because she plans to go tour that school in New York and he's like, oh, okay, give me my ring back. And she's like, let's not do that. I just want to tour the school, that's all. And he's like, do what you want. But he later calls her and tells her he's fine with it. Ethan sucks at math, which isn't that shocking. I've never thought he had a smart thought in his head. And when Kathy offers to help him, he's like, no, I don't want you to help me. I'll just fail instead. Ben finds Amy and terrorizes her about not actually being married to Ricky by saying that they belong together and they're going to school together in New York. And she's like, you're weird, get out of my face. George buys a restaurant because he's having a midlife crisis of some sort, so good for him. While on the flight to New York, Amy and Omar are seated next to each other and they're actually having a pretty good conversation. Ben being the loser that he is not only takes the same same flight as Amy, but also texts Adrian that Amy and Omar are sitting next to each other. But Adrian is not mad about it because she trusts Omar and knows that Amy isn't going to do anything, so Ben just looks like an idiot stalker. Clementine leaves Ricky a little letter saying she loves him, but she can't be around him anymore, and now Ricky's all confused. George goes to the guest house while Jack is sleeping, and this happens. Jack, it's me. Open up, come on, we're going to my house. Don't shoot! It's me, George! Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. In the next episode, Jack admits to Tom that he isn't sleeping because he keeps seeing that guy that assaulted him everywhere he goes. George has had enough of Jack's antics and tells him to go get some help. John bit a kid at daycare, so they make Ricky take John home and he's not that happy about it because he has a bunch of shit to do, but he's the only one at home, so he has to. He and John have a little day to themselves eating and doing other fun things. Ricky and Amy talk about her time in New York and she feels a little guilty about going. Adrian talks some sense into Jack about how stupid he's being, so he decides to go see Dr. Fields. Well, George finds him trying to leave, so George makes him go inside to see him. Randomly, Kathy's ex wants to see their baby even though she's getting adopted and he's never wanted anything to do with her before. And he shows up to Kathy's house saying they should get married and take their baby back. And she's like, don't piss me off. So he leaves. And Amy calls Ricky saying that she doesn't want to lose him. In episode 18, Omar asks Adrian to move to New York and she's not having it because that's really random. Amy is tired of Ben stalking and being weirdly obsessed with her. I really hope we're not on the same flight back. Amy talks to the college admissions person and they tell her that not only can John not stay with her in her dorm, but that if she does not go to their school, they're keeping her $2,000 application fee. And she's like, what are you talking about? Adrian talks to Ricky and pretty much tells him to wake up. Amy does not want to marry you. Jack meets that lawyer that tried to help Betty with like her divorce and he convinces Jack to sue the school because technically it's their fault that Jack got hurt. He's not wrong. Jack should get that money, but his dad doesn't let him because it's wrong whatever that means. Ricky tries to find a way to financially support Amy going to the school in New York, and Bunny is like, don't be dumb, just let the girl go and don't get married. In episode 19, Ben is being a fucking weirdo and steals Amy's engagement ring. Ricky asks George for help with paying for a place to Amy to live so him and John can go visit her. And George is like, no. Ethan is trying to get petitions to ban algebra at his school because he's convinced that no adult actually uses algebra. 
I don't know. He's on to something here. I haven't used Y equals MX plus B since I've graduated. Adrian considers New York with Omar, so she starts looking at schools to see if any of them seem interesting to her. Amy comes back home and Ricky notices that she's not wearing her engagement ring and he's like, that's suspicious. That's weird. Ben tells Ricky he's getting an apartment and he's more than happy to share it with him, Amy, and John. Just let him know. Amy is now looking for her rings and finds out that Ben is the one that took them and she's obviously pissed off and he somehow uses that opportunity to be like, well, yeah, but you shouldn't marry someone you don't love. Even though he's annoying as fuck, He's kind of right. No one seems to believe she wants to marry Ricky. Jack's mom randomly presses Grace because she's looking at colleges out of state. Why are you terrorizing an 18 year old girl? Do you not have a job? And Ricky is starting to think that Amy does not want to get married to him and just wants to be free and go off to New York. In episode 20, Ricky and Amy tell everyone they're getting married the day after Amy's graduation, but no one thinks that shit is gonna happen. Grace randomly tells Amy that she and Jack are engaged, but she's acting really weird about it. Madison and Lauren both got accepted into UC Berkeley. I love that for them. Grace considers staying in state to go to school because Jack's mom threatened him and said she's not allowed to leave Jack, so now she's really conflicted about it. She's also mad because Grace Grant got into Harvard. Jack and I are getting married. I heard. Great news. I'm going to Harvard. What? Wow. That is so unfair! Well, ma'am, you haven't taken your schoolwork seriously since you started dating every boy under the sun. How are you confused? Ethan is jealous because Kathy wants to help some boy prepare for the spelling bee and I don't care, so we move. Adrian decides to move to New York with Omar after her sophomore year, but she doesn't sound that convincing about it. George and Leo talk and he tells George that the only reason Amy wants to get married after graduation is so she can go to summer school in New York without feeling guilty about it. And finally, Kathleen and George get married in the restaurant that he bought. In episode 21, Anna's being kind of annoying because she's thinking about selling the house and she also feels some type of way about George and Kathleen getting married. If this were anyone else, I would be on their side, but Anne annoys me. Amy tells Anne that she's going to school in New York and Anna's like, um but you're getting married. And Amy is like, well, that's why we're getting married before I go. And Anna's like, um, you can't have it both ways. It's either one or the other. Nora overhears this whole conversation and it's just like, oh. Okay. Nora then tells this information to Ricky and he's just like, no, I think you heard it wrong. Amy's not leaving. Grace is avoiding Jack because she doesn't want to get married or go to the same school as him and wants to get on with her life. And Kathleen is like, okay, just break up with him. Adrian and Omar have a fight because he's starting to look at condos in New York, even though they agreed that they would both move in a year, but they later make up. Anne tells George that if Amy wants to be single and go to school in New York, then she'll sell the house and give Amy the money to do so. And George says this. Why don't you leave them alone too and not set up a reward for Amy doing the wrong thing? She needs to get married, go to school here, be a mother to John and a wife to Ricky. And that's all there is to it. How are you going to tell an 18 year old that her life is just now being a wife? Anne talks to Kathleen about feeling left out of her family and Kathleen is really nice about it and says she's always welcome around her and George. So they're cool now. Ricky and Amy talk about her going off to summer school in New York and at first they fight about it, but then he agrees to let her go. The woman that Anne was seeing randomly says she's in love with Nora, so yeah. And Chloe, Ben's sister, calls that pimp that beat up Jack. In episode 22, Amy, Adrian, and Grace go to George's restaurant and they all talk about sorta kinda not wanting to be married. Grace slept with Jack as a way to get out of marrying him, but that makes no sense. George and Kathleen are like, stop playing games and just tell him you don't wanna marry him. And she's like, no, I can't do that. Omar comes to Adrian to tell her what's been on his million dollar mind. There's just no easy way to say this, Adrian. I'm not sure that I want to be in New York and have my fiance living here. 
and he asks for his ring back. So they're done and he goes back to New York. Tangerine comes to the butcher shop and is like, yeah, that letter I sent, just forget about it and good luck with your marriage. Leo tells Ricky that he has an apartment building for Ben and Amy to live in and even him if he wants to move to New York. And Ricky's like, I don't wanna move to New York, but I'm sure Amy would appreciate that. Ben is still on his delusional antics and tells Alice that Amy loves him. You could go get married anytime, any day but they haven't and it's because she's not in love with him and it's not because she wants to be independent it's because she still holds out hope too that someday she and I can find our way back to each other. Ricky and Jack find Adrian in the coffee shop and she does not look well. She also tells them that they need to wake up and realize that their girls aren't gonna marry them and they're just not gonna tell them. But she only tells them that to be petty. And old Ricky comes out and is like, don't play with me. A safe place to do that is in therapy. So why don't you go get some help and stop hurting people around you and then maybe someone can love you. He then tells Clementine that they're never going to have a relationship even if him and Amy don't work out which there was really no point in him doing that. Jack tells Grace that Adrian told him that Grace doesn't wanna marry him. And Grace is like, no, see, she lied. She's still in love with me. So Grace then texts Amy that Adrian spilled the beans on the little conversation they all had about not wanting to be married. Ricky tells Amy about Leo's apartment offer. And at first she's like, I don't wanna live in the same apartment as Ben. But Ricky says he trusts her and frankly, she doesn't have any other options, so she's cool with it. In the next episode, Grace and Amy talk about Adrian fucking them over, and Amy admits to Grace that the only reason she's marrying Ricky is because she said she'd do it and she can't go back on her word. Alice tells Amy that Ben is so obsessed with her because he read her diary, so she clearly wrote something in it to make Ben think he has a chance. And Amy is about to go beat that scrawny boy's ass. Read my diary. Uh, I'm gonna say something I never thought I'd say. You wanna get off me? Admit it, you read my diary. Uh, ben, how did you read my diary? I hacked your computer, didn't Alice tell you? Because obviously she told you something. Get a restraining order on this man. What's the hold up? Henry joins the army, so there's that. Jack goes to Madison to drop off a gift that his mom bought for her. She's always liked Madison more. And they end up kissing. Even and Kathy have broken up and he's trying to have sex with some other girl. So you went through all that trouble to get Kathy to stay just to break up with her because she won't have sex with you? Grace finally fesses up and admits she doesn't want to be married. That pimp that Chloe called shows up in front of Leo's house trying to get her back or something, but his ass gets arrested. Ricky confronts Amy about what Adrian said and he's like, time's up, Miss Girl. If you want me to hear what Adrian said, then you're gonna have to say it to me yourself. This is it, Amy. You're in or you're out. In episode 24, it's graduation day, so everyone looks back at their high school years and it's very bittersweet. While talking to George, Amy has flashbacks of her life and it cuts to the scene in the pilot episode of Amy and her family. Um, can I talk to the two of you alone? You have to talk to them alone about something? Like what, finally decided to wear a bra? Grace is having dinner with her family and George and she asks her mom, why the fuck did you let me go out with Jack? And she's like, um, we tried to stop you. So we then get a flashback to the early days of Grace and Jack's relationship. What's that ring? I never noticed you had a ring like that. It's a promise ring. And my parents gave it to me when I promised them I wouldn't have sex until I get married. Ah, yes, Jack in that fuck ass bowl cut. Ben and Amy talk and he asks her if she's really getting married to Ricky and she's like, yup. Which leads to another flashback of their relationship. So you dance? Mm, not really. <laughs> Neither do I. How hard can it be? Everyone is now officially graduated and Amy says bye to Lauren and Madison, which is super sad. Grace and Adrian make up before Grace goes off to college. Stay in touch, okay? I'm sorry, I'm sorry too. Okay, I might actually start crying, so let's move on. Grace and Jack officially break up, but they say that they're gonna remain friends. 
Adrian realizes she's pretty much all alone and cuts the bullshit to be with her man in New York. All I've wanted is for Adrian to be happy, so I'm happy. Amy finally comes clean and calls off the engagement and Ricky is way beyond pissed. Ricky, I can't go through with it. You're insane. I've given you every opportunity to get out of this wedding and you insisted, you insisted we go through with it. We're gonna go through with it. I'm gonna make you go through with it. They admit to each other that they're not actually in love with each other and they only wanted to go through with this for John's sake. So they decide that John will stay with Ricky for the summer while Amy goes off to school and kind of just sees what happens after that. But they agree that they should remain friends if they're going to be able to raise John together. The episode ends with Amy locking the door to the butcher shop while Ricky reads a bedtime story to John. And she lived happily ever after. So away. And that is the end of the secret life of the American teenager. Oh my gosh. I'm not gonna lie to you, seasons four and five are probably my least favorite. They're very slow. But anyways, that is the end of the Secret Life of the American Teenager series. This is not the last show I will be doing. I am currently working on a big video for a very iconic show I will be covering later this year. So mark your calendar, she will be coming. Anyways, if you liked this video and this entire series, let me know by giving it a like and subscribe to this channel. Also check out some of my other videos. I think they're very much a good time so please go enjoy yourselves. I really want to thank all of you so much for watching especially if you made it to the end of this series. I hope you're okay. Again thank all of you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!